Hey, welcome to the process. My name is Dr. John Bush. This is lesson 34. We are trying to help you win your fantasy football drafts, which I think is about 80% of your season victory, at least in redraft. Uh, this is a continuation of running back versus wide receiver positional analysis part three. We're going to hit the details and dig a little deeper than your usual folks out there. Uh, so with that, let's go. So wide receivers, we are going to apply Tukey and ANOVA testing of the data. And the big question is, can we use last year's rankings to predict this year's end of season fantasy point average and also uh, aspects of the variation in that in that data so can we use uh, 2020 to help us in 2021 uh, there's probably a group that would say no there's probably a group that would say yes I prefer to let the data lead us towards whatever conclusions can be drawn and go from there. So I don't have any preconceived uh, specific ideas. I think last year's rankings are probably going to give some insight into this year's uh, end of season, you know, in December, what do we see? But I'm not sure, you know, is the second best last year going to be the second best this year? That's, that's very specific. But again, when we're trying to set up a reference class forecasting, we're just trying to get some averages and kind of a foundation then to apply our deeper learning. Okay, that's all we're trying to do when I, and you see pronouncements here, that's not a line in the sand, right? We're not drawing in blood, okay? Uh, people like to pronounce, oh, I'm going to plant my flag. I'm going to say this or that. I don't do it that way. Uh, I think, uh, you know, Anything can, one data point can change the whole concept about a player or a situation, right? Uh, so it just can't be done to where, you know, I know it looks good. Oh, back in April, I said this. I, I'm not sure what they're, the people on Twitter are trying to do or say, uh, because they're not going to show you every prediction and say, yeah, here's 10 that I missed, but I got this one. Uh, that doesn't look so good, right? Uh, so it's best to show the one, right? So it's as uh, Dr. Taleb said, you don't see the drowned worshipers, right? You just see the survivors. And he was talking about stock market pickers, right? The only ones around in five years are the, are the few that were successful. Right. Oh, wow. They must know something. Well, you don't see the 10,000 that failed. So really, do the five that were successful know something? Or by chance, is there going to be five or six just by dumb luck that are going to end up favored under a, a, a situation? So that's why I apply testing uh, using stats and try to think about biases and the strength of predict predictions. Uh, that's why I like reference class forecasting to set at least a foundation, okay? And I think it's always important to know when the foundation is squishy or when it's less squishy, right? It's always squishy, right? You can't, unless you know the future, unless you're a time traveler, Everything you think has to have a level squish, okay? So uh, that's just kind of how's the dice tumble. 
so this is a, a, a table from 1 to 72. And so what I did from the years 2014 to 2020, listed the fantasy uh, point averages or basically just production of the player that was uh, ranked at that position, whatever you look to the uh, left uh, the year before. So in 2014, then I'm using 2013 rankings. And the colors is, of course, green to red. Uh, green is high and, and red is low. So you can kind of scan through and see uh, failures and, and successes kind of thing. And this is, again, in wide receivers. I think we've covered some of the other uh, positions as well. So we have this as, as the background. And uh, I think if you just scan through here, okay, I see a lot of high points, you know, the first 18 or so. Look at the bottom, you know, 15 or 20. Lots of red out here. Not totally everything red. There's a few, you know, and I'm drawing some lines here. There's a few situations where things were missed, but there's a lot of failures. So now we get to see the failures too, right? Imagine I hid all the red from you and just, you know, tried to show you all the success. You'd be like, well, where's that data, right? Where's the blanks? And the blanks are that the player either was hurt or did not perform. Something happened and they didn't get any points. Okay. So uh, it's best to kind of see. So I think uh, a trend is from high to low. I think that pretty much is a takeaway here. So there is a suggestion on average that if you were good last year, you, you know, you should be fairly good this year. Okay. I mean, if you want to say, well, first or third, or I mean, you know, at what point in our drafts are we going to get to pick, you know, to where we can grab on our team the top six. Yeah, I mean, we don't, right? You're, you know, there's uh, uh, people picking between your picks, right? So who knows what you're going to get. So it's, you know, it's just best to kind of look at trends and, and consider possibilities and uh, trend lines, as it were. So here's that actual data that then I'm going to get a little, uh, a deeper on. And so if you if you look at, and this is position, this is rank last year, and I grouped then, instead of singly, I grouped in sixes, right? And then fantasy average points, the variation, the high and the low, in uh, that uh, position over for 2014 to 2020. So you can kind of see the, the ceiling and the floor and look at the, the level of variation in the, uh, uh, from last year's ranks to this year. So there's a lot, I mean, this, this data is, uh, here's action packed so if we just kind of scroll and look at the trend, it is pretty clear to me as a trend, if we go from uh, rank one to 72 by sixes, the on average across 2014 to 20, last year's rankings gave us a pretty good trend. Okay, so I think if you're ignoring last year's rankings, that's probably a waste of your time. And of course, then some people are, well, look at the floor, right? I understand. 
if it was an exact match, the ceiling would equal the floor, right? Or pretty close to it. We don't see that. I mean, you know, I, I'm not sure there ever is going to be the ceiling equals the floor. And there's some pretty dramatic uh, gaps here between ceiling and floor. So just be aware. I mean, people want to focus on the ceiling you know, uh, as an optimist, as a pessimist, moi here, uh, uh, I look at the floor and I'm like, looks rough. Uh, so I think you need to consider that. Look at the variation. Uh, look at the top six, high variation. Then we drop down, less variation. Then we hit more variation, then less then a little higher. So there's kind of patterns of variation. So, you know, this would tell me that uh, 7 through 18, less variation. And sure enough, the floor is actually higher than in the top six. But the ceiling is lower, right? So, I mean, you know, what you want, you know, good grammar, good taste, right? So uh, there you go. You know, you can't have both, right? So I think, to me, I think the take home is there is a trend. You should look at last year's metrics to give you an insight to this year's predictions. You should be aware that variation and ceiling and floor, it's, you know, there's a lot of squish out there and there are certain regions and areas where there's a lot of squish. Looks to me like from about 37 to 72, if you look at the floor, uh, wow, uh, I guess I needed a different color here. Maybe I'll do orange. Wow, orange is not too good either. Blue better? Yeah, blue's better. Uh, that's pretty pretty lean here, some of these numbers. You're talking about blowing it up. Uh, pretty blowing it up. So for me, as a pessimist, I think uh, 7 through 18, I'm feeling the best about, and that's probably you would think, oh, I feel good about 1 to 6. Yeah, probably. But boy, you can fall down. So, uh, you know, in some ways, uh, as far as zero running back or zero wide receiver drafting, this may point you one way or the other, okay? Maybe you can wait a little bit in the safer picks or a little bit further down, grab some early running backs and then some later wide receivers and maybe you'll be, have a little safe, but you got to make up those points somewhere, right? Because you you potentially are going to miss 60, 70 points in ceiling. So, yeah, okay. Uh, you know, you got to pick your poison there. I think it's very interesting, though, in what, what this take-home is. And uh, as far as I know, I hadn't seen anything like this out there in Twitterverse, okay? Don't ask me why people are not just knocking themselves in the head to try to produce this data or come see this data. I don't know, but good for you, the few that are listening here, uh, you win, okay? Uh, everybody else is gonna toot their own horn and I don't know what they're doing. Uh, this is the data. I, it is what it is, right? You see what I see, okay? Uh, so uh, this is how I would have proceed. So I just grafted this. So these are just graphs uh, showing the aspects of the table here. The uh, ceiling is in green and the floor is in red. And like I said, it gets pretty lean about right here. Okay. Uh, to basically you've squished all the way down to zero at this point. So just be aware.
People talk about, well, I'm going to find that sleeper. Well, you could, and certainly there's opportunities to get somebody. But the average tells me you won't be getting this level of sleeper. Okay? You might get a level here, but the risk is this. You end up with no bird in the hand, right? So just be aware, this is your expectation. This is the reference class forecasting here. This is what it's showing you from about right here, the drop down. So after wide receiver three and wide receiver four and deeper, uh, average on average, you're not going to pull a miracle out of the hat on average. So if you're betting on grabbing that secret receiver that, that nobody is figuring out, the data says you're not going to on average. Okay, you might get a good one, but it won't be a great one. I know you can tell me that one time. I, stats looking at large numbers, or we try to use large numbers. So that's what the data tells me. Here is the fantasy point average. Notice it pretty much is dropping as we go down. So there is a trend. If last year's rankings didn't matter, then this should be a, a flat line. Okay? It would be a flat line. We don't see a flat line, folks. Okay? Care what people say. Here's the data. No flat line. It's not inverse. Okay? It's not secret wide receivers that are popping up that people are missing. The public is pretty good about picking things. Okay, the average uh, picks ADP is pretty good. The uh, variation is fairly constant. It's a little higher in some spots, a little lower, but it's not so dramatic. And then here's the, the floor, like I said, that this looks like the sweet spot to me, that on average, uh, you know, the safety is sitting right there. I know the, you know, the high risk, high reward is sitting here. Got that. Okay. I know that. I'm looking at the data too. But I'm just saying that I think that fuels people that grab early running backs is they're switching back and grabbing one of these safer wide receivers that is going to stabilize their team. Okay, so, you know, if you, theoretically, I guess, if you could grab two good running backs and still grab, say, two wide receivers in 13th to 18th, say people jump on tight ends or, uh, you know, quarterbacks, and maybe you get a shot at that. I mean, obviously that would be great, right? You, you can have your cake and eat it too. So anyway, there's uh, that data there. And this is percentage of top. Another way to look at the same data I showed you, and I took the best figure in the columns and assigned that 100%. And then I wanted to uh, look at the fantasy point average, and we see that uh, 18th, we are getting 88% of the best, even as low as the 18th uh, wide receiver. So if you look at the running backs in this data, you won't see that. The running backs tend to drop out very quickly. Hence, that's why people take early running backs, because they know if they can hit one, then everybody else on average is at a disadvantage. Here's the variation. The highest variation was in the top six over, what, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Is that seven years? Yeah, 
Seven years of data. Seven years. Okay. So there it is. And you see that in the sweet zone that the variation is dropped 70% and then it pops back up again and then it drops kind of and then pops up a little bit. Here is the fantasy points versus variation. So it's kind of how many points can you get by by the risk or the uncertainty level right and we see the sweet zone is right there that's what the numbers say if you look at the ratio you're getting higher fantasy points at the end of the season than the uncertainty level you're picking into that is really sweet to see and it i mean it's not bad up to the 30th and uh, but it really uh, drops down after the 49th and you're really not getting a lot of return by the 55th uh, wide receiver here. So you can kind of watch this ratio drop, drop, drop. And if you flip the ratio of variation to fantasy point, okay, so that means this would be V sub F here, okay, just to flip it. Then the best is the lowest, and the highest here we see is in this range here, and even here is pretty high. So you're doing pretty good the first one backs, uh, wide receivers, ones, twos, and, and threes, but then so you're not picking up versus the uncertainty level. You're not getting a return on your fantasy point uh, capital, as it were, here. So just be aware of that. So people start getting crazy, saying, well, it's all a gamble anyway at this point. Well, I think I showed you that if you, at best, you're still not going to get, you know, wide receiver one level production you're not unless you're just spectacular over what seven years okay i understand i had that one year right no 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 do it for seven then come back and we can talk okay then we got something right then we got something but right now you know you're one time out of that you remember that was spectacular, that stays with you and you forgot all your losses, that doesn't help you out at all, okay? You gotta just etch or sketch that away, okay? So I think this is really sweet data and, uh, you know, instead of a lot of other malarkey that's out there, there's a lot of stuff out on Twitter. There's all sorts of claims. It's like snake oil out there. I mean, no offense, okay? So uh, I prefer data, okay, uh, versus snake oil, okay? So uh, if you enjoy bathing in snake oil, there's plenty of opportunity to do that. It is amusing to me. Look, I'm not out here. Uh, it is not my place to come out and chastise anybody selling snake oil, Okay, that's not how we do it. But if you're writing or something, you just kind of don't say anything. So the fact that I don't comment a lot should tell you, okay, it's not that I shouldn't comment. It's just like, no, 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 no. I don't have no time for that at all. Okay. Another way to look at the data and again, that's how I do things. I do things two, three different ways to look at it. Okay, I'm not just satisfied cutting. In biology, we dissect a frog. You can cut it sagittal. You can cut it longitudinal. You could cut it on the diagonal. You see different things each cut. Okay, so that's what I learned early on. Uh, you know, one way is not necessarily the best way. I like to look at things a couple different ways, right? So this is scaled 
uh, wide receiver fantasy point versus variation. And I extended 2002 to 20 just to kind of uh, increase the, the data a little bit. And uh, what we see is the highest variation is with the top six. Okay. And here's the sweet zone again. We've seen that, right? And then it picks back up, drops, and then picks up. Kind of almost a, a high-low, kind of a, a wave-like form. But the amount of fantasy points is dropping. So if you're on the mountain here, each round, each six wide receivers gone, you're losing ground, okay? So just kind of imagine that as the draft goes on, okay? So that should tell you about things. And that may be helpful if you're waiting for, say, a later quarterback or something. I mean, at some point, whatever you're grabbing as a wide receiver or a running back may not you know, be worth then, uh, you know, a late round quarterback because they produce a lot of points anyway. So there are some, there's a lot of different things that are pushing different draft strategies. So do be aware of that. So if we look at the variance, the V, uh, the F to V, and I note that we start picking up right here. Okay, and I put a star, 31 to 36. So about wide receiver two, about halfway uh, through wide receiver two, you're getting nice points relative to the uncertainty. But after about the 30th, uh, whatever you're getting in points, uh, you're losing in uncertainty, right? So your chances, I guess, of hitting that floor have to be going up, okay? So that gets a little bit uncertain at this point. So it gets really squishy, really squishy, way back down here. Less squishy in this world, obviously, okay? We're kind of at a transition here, 25th to 30. To, I'm sorry, 19th to 30th here, you're mid squishy. <laughs> so that's a nice way to look at it as well. So stat testing of these groups versus the fantasy point averages. So I ran these groups together and did an ANOVA and I did 10 different slices of the data. And that's why it says K equal 10 there. The P value is one, what, 16 zeros, one times 10 to the 16th power. So it's highly significant that there is a difference in at least one of these treatment groups versus the other. Okay, so we can actually then use the two key testing is a way to measure the differences, right? So we've talked about the stat test before. So if this had not been uh, strong, then we would have stopped and said, there's no difference. Forget everything I just spent 28 minutes telling you. But that's not the case at all, folks. This is, you know, this is, this is where I get excited, right? <laughs> this is anti-snake oil, right? Everybody talks about fragility and anti-fragility. This is anti-snake oil to me when I get this kind of statistical data on fantasy football metrics. This is mm, so sweet. So if we look at the position and we look at rank last year, and let's call it a group, and we assign a code to it. So group A is one to six. Group B is seventh to 12th running back. I mean, I'm sorry, wide receiver. I got running back on all the way to the 60th, which is J. 
So now we then scan, and this is two key uh, significant difference, high significant difference. And if it's green, that means the treatment groups are different. If it's red, that means they're not different. So I put red bars to show you the groups that are different and non-different. So A versus B, C, and, and D are really no different as far as fantasy point averages. So that's wide receiver one to the wide end of wide receiver two. In some ways, looking at last year, it does give you something that is some prediction, but the hard stats say that you should not be that strong on it that after the 24th, then you can say, okay, this is a very interesting group. And if you look at the B and compare 7th to 12th versus, you go all the way to the E. And C goes all the way then to the F. And then uh, A through, you know, E, as I said, this is the difference here in the top group. So you shouldn't, if you're thinking, oh, uh, last year's ranking one to six is group A. Uh, nah, I don't believe that. Well, the data says you shouldn't go too deep to try to find your top six, that most likely it won't be the 25th down. So you can eliminate that. The stats say don't look there. Maybe in the top 24, 7th through 24th, you might find something but not past E. So these are just kind of barriers for you when you're hunting for those secret gems, those sleepers. There's got to be some limits here. And notice that A all the way, you know, is E to J. B goes down to E. C goes down to F. And here's some more data here. And notice by the time you get to F, F is not different. In other words, this whole group here, pretty much the data says it's interchangeable from last year. So wide receiver 31st last year to 60th, there's no difference. The data says the 60th last year could be the 31st this year. So I think that tells you where you should look for an advantage, some people. See, so their idea of a sleeper is to get something here that's there. Mm, the data says, nope, shouldn't go this far down. If you want something in here, you shouldn't go past the 24th. So now we have a line in the sand to go hunting, right? We got boundaries of our claim, right? Where's the gold nuggets? It's not past this level if you're expecting a nugget in this range. Okay, so, so I can use this as a way to start hunting. So this tells me that last year I grab all these and relook at them again. So my research needs to uh, focus hard, especially in these range, because the public is going to be maybe over suspicious or over loving like, man, that running back or wide receivers 30, 54th last year. Yeah, it, it's not going to do much this year. Stats says that's not the case. Stats said it could be a wide receiver three down here at the wide receiver five. Okay. So you want to find a sleeper. That's the level of sleeper that I think this data is talking about. Okay. So we need to get our definitions down a little straight okay with the snake oil salesman anything's possible i'm telling you the stats are saying there's levels and boundaries that reasonable time and effort should be devoted to your hunting and this information this video these charts give you those boundaries i, I here's my gift Okay, Dr. Bush, what have you done for us lately? 
here's what I've done for you. Okay, so the good news is everybody else is too busy making their own snake oil to figure out what the hell's real. That's fine. That's fine. Okay, let everybody go to sleep because we need to crush them in the leagues. So that's how I use the data. Is not I'm stuck in, oh, I've got to take the top six. Last year has to be top. Eh, yeah, but there's a there's a good ceiling, but there's a, a tricky little squishy floor there. But, hey, if I'm going to spend some time looking deep here, this is the area I are to look at. Okay, so that gives you something to, to chew on. There's a piece of meat on the bone to chew on a little bit. But don't tell everybody. <laughs> and uh, just another test. Get a little bit trickier. There's a Bon Ferroni and Holmes test. That's another test. And it hones us in. And it really says the top 18 or the boundary. So Toki says the top 24 are your boundary for looking. The B and H says top 18. Mm. I think I'll spend on the top 18, okay, on hunting. So that's what I would do. I would take some big slices and really get deep. And that's how you use this, right? People are looking at every crumbs. I'm trying to save us a little time here. Okay, so I hope I am. So that was my 10 cent tour of running backs and wide receivers. We covered wide receivers here. Go back and I've hit these lessons two or three times here. I think it's that. I think it's going to produce lots of good stuff for you if you spend the time. If you spend 10 minutes on it and drink a six pack of beer, eh. Uh, <laughs> well, Dr. Bush said that. Well, you, but you got to live and eat and breathe the data a little bit, okay? Okay, good luck. We will continue our journey and lessons. Uh, and it's worth what you're paying for anyway. <laughs> Okay, hang in there. There's my dog barking. Okay, this is Dr. Bush for the process. Signing off. <laughs>